Hi, good morning. It's Mrs. Stevens, and this is day five of transformational geometry, the last day of the unit. So we have a test next class. This warm-up is um, kind of a review of everything before we do the new lesson. So we have a picture of a square, and it says graph, label, and state the coordinates of square LM, L prime, M prime, N prime, P prime, which is the image of square LMNOP <laughs> under a rotation of negative 90. So it's very helpful to know where the original points are. And don't forget, a rotation of negative 90 is the same as a rotation of 270. So I've got my cheat sheet here. And I know that the rule, here, let me write down my originals. So there's my L. There's my M. There's my N. There's my P. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Those are my originals. And the rule says switch the order. Okay. So I'm going to switch the order and change the sign of the second number. Switch the order, change the sign. Switch the order, change the sign. Switch the order, change the sign. Okay, so the new um, the new rectangle or the new square zero three. If you rotate it negative ninety degrees, that's going clockwise, so it should go from the second quadrant back over to the first quadrant, and it should still maintain its same shape. Hmm, two five. So something's wrong there, because I can tell it's not a square. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong point. Yes, it is. Boom, 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 boom. So it should stay the same shape, stay the same size, because reflections, rotations, and translations are all isometries. OK, what what is the translation? So I'm looking for a capital T that moves a negative 1 over to a 6. Well, that's moving it to the right 7. And a 2 up to a 6 is moving it to the up 4. Um, reflection in the origin. This is one that we I de-emphasized. So um, that's reflecting it through the origin. And I didn't show you that one. That's my fault. Vertical line symmetry, meaning if I fold the word down the middle like that, it will be symmetric. That's the only one that will work. Dad and Bob and Eve, if you fold it, the D will be going backwards, the B will be going backwards. All right, and because this is, we only have one more unit, and then we have the final exam, this is our spiral review from the very beginning. The measure of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle. So just practicing reading those words and drawing it. Vertex angle, that's that angle. Isosceles triangle, two sides the same, 76 degrees. Find the base angle. So all the angles add up to 180. Oops, that would be not 24, that would be 104. So the last topic is a dilation. A dilation is not an isometry. It's the first one we've done that's not an isometry. It either enlarges or reduces a figure. And you dilate about a point, which is called the center of dilation, obviously. <laughs> and the factor that you're dilating it by um, the dilation factor, like how much you're scaling it up, is called the dilation factor or sometimes called the scale factor. And we use usually use little letter k for that. So if k is greater than 1, it's enlarging. And if k is less than 1, it's a reduction. Right. And dilation notation is capital D for dilation. 
in a subscript K, which tells you how much you dilated it. Um, and usually for us, yeah, actually always for us, we're going to be using the center, the origin, as the dilation center. So you're blowing it up um, around the origin. So d sub k of any point x, y will go to kx. So you're multiplying the x-coordinate by k, multiplying the y-coordinate by k. This is the first time we're multiplying. That makes it um, grow, which means it's not an isometry. They're similar, but they're not congruent. Okay, it's the similar shape, it's just a bigger version. So here's your original point, 2, negative 4. If you multiply both of these by a negative 2, uh, actually let's go like this, multiply by a negative 2, multiply by a negative 2, my new point will be negative 4, 8. And the negative actually means it's going to be twice as big, but it's also going to be flipped over. All right, find the constant. So you're trying to find the k that turned a 6 into an 18 and a negative 4 into a negative 3 by multiplication. So in both cases, that was times 3. Okay, multiplication and division instead of adding and subtracting. All right, and then this third one, I've asked you questions like this before. Under a dilation, where the center of dilation is the origin, the image of this point is this point. So you times by 3. So you find the coordinates of B prime, which is going to be the image of this point. So you have to do the same dilation that I did on my point A to your point B, which is times it by 3. Times it by 3, so that'll be 12, 0. All right, what does it look like if you graph it? So we got J, K, L, M. Okay, quadrilateral J, K, L, M has vertices negative 2, 4, negative 2, 2, negative 4, negative 2, and negative 4, positive 2. What? Hold on, what did I do wrong? Negative 2, 4 is J. Oh, negative 2, negative 2 is K. Sorry about that. Negative 2, negative 2 is K. And then negative 4, negative 2, negative 4, positive 2. Okay, it's a little um, skinny. Sorry, that didn't come out very good. All right, um, so graph the image of this after a dilation with a scale factor of 2.5. So you got to multiply all these numbers by 2.5. So I just used my calculator to do it. So that will go to negative 5, 10, negative 5, negative 5, negative 10, negative 5, negative 10, positive 5. Switch colors. So it's going to blow up. Um, it's going to be two and a half times as big. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But it's going to um, also be bigger, but also um, be pushed out to the left. Because remember, our dilation center of dilation is the origin. So we're kind of expanding it like it's all coming out of the origin, um, blowing up out of the origin. So those are L prime and K prime. And then here would be m prime. That's negative 10, 5. And then negative 5, 10 will be right here. That's j prime. So 2 and a half times as big. That's my new one. All right. Um, now let's put it all together. 
So we've learned four different transformations. We learned reflection, translation, rotation, dilation. You can do multiple steps. You can do one of them, two of them, three of them, or all four of them. Um, the symbol for transformation, again, is this little cir circle. Um, that's the symbol that means composition of transformations, meaning you're doing two or more transformations, and you're doing them one after the other. You first do the one on the right. So this would be rotate 90, and then reflect over the x-axis. So you do this one first, then this one second. OK, so the way you draw it is you just start out with your original point. Here's my point, negative 2, 6. That's my point A. First, I'm dilating it by a factor of 2. So multiply them by 2. OK, that's my dilation. Sometimes you label it at the top, what you just did. And then I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. If you're reflecting over the x-axis, you don't change the x. That's how I remember it. OK, another one. Starting out with 2, negative 4. Oh, reflecting over the line x equals 1. This one is a, involves a little sketch here. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's 2, negative 4. I'm reflecting it over that line. So it's going to go from there to there, which will be at 0, negative 4. And then I'm reflecting that over the y-axis. When you're reflecting over the y-axis, you don't change the y. So it's sitting right here on the y-axis. So if you reflect it over the y-axis, it's not going to go anywhere. All right, this kind of problem has been giving us trouble. So let me see if I can explain it. According to the diagram, ABCD is a square with symmetry lines of N, that's the diagonal line, S, that's the vertical line, and L, that's the horizontal line. So it's symmetric around all those lines. Start with BF, reflect it over S. So this is the S line right here. Reflecting this across this line is going to bring it over here. Because it has to stay the same distance away, and it just would flip all the way over to here. Then, oh, so that one I did in green. Then reflect that over N. Well, N is the diagonal line. So this point is on the diagonal line, so it's going to stay. This point is going to flip over to here. I feel like we had this exact problem before. So it's going to be at AE. All right, last one, the whole shape. <sighs> Start with my original. Translate it down 4. OK, that's B. That's C, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's A. I didn't write down any math there. I just slid it down 4. Oops. <laughs> so right now I am at negative 5, 1 for my A, negative 2, 1 for my B, and negative 3, negative 1 for my C. Those are my primes. Now I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So again, rotation of 90. Switch the order. This is rotation of 90 counterclockwise. Switch the order, change the sign of the first one. I'm looking at the rule sheet. Change the order, switch the sign of the first one. Change the order, change the sign of the first one. OK, so my new points are at 1, 3. That's C double prime. Negative 1, negative 2. Hmm. Negative 1, negative 2. That's B prime. 
Something doesn't look right. A prime is negative 1, negative 5. Okay, that side looks okay. Something's wrong with my C here. C is, oh, bleh, positive 1, negative 3. Sorry. Okay, yeah, I mean, even I make mistakes, right? You can always catch yourself. So that will be the image after I rotate it. So remember, it's here, and if you're rotating at 90 degrees, you're just turning at a quarter of a turn counterclockwise. So it'll go there. All right, there's a um, one, two, three, four, five, six problems for you to try on this you try page. So try them out and call me over if you have any questions, and we'll check them. Thanks.